everyone. It's another episode of Talking Fun with Edo Podcast with our guest, Matt 4MD. And here is the interview right now. Oh, wow. Hello, everyone. Here is another episode with Talking Fun with Edo Podcast with our 38th guest with Matt, a.k.a. 4MD. So how are you doing today, my friend? I am doing well. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for uh, having me on this interview. Of course, man. Anytime. So um, as usual, like I got some questions to start off for you. So first one we're going to start off with is uh, where are you from, by the way? I'm from Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia? Yes. Nice. That's that's interesting you said. I don't even know if we really talked about it before, but yeah, I'm actually from there too. Um, I was in the East Point. Where were you in the, uh, Atlanta, by the way? Um, uh, a small city near Peachtree City. Okay, Peachtree. Okay, nice. So... One of the things I've realized that you've done a lot, especially from one of the cool things that we did from one of our collab for my last Japanese report of White Berry, is one of the things I've noticed that you've done is you also make videos too. And one of the things that was really cool was there is a video of where you did like a TED talk of Basically, uh, the thing that we both share together also is autism. So I was wondering, like, how did you even come up with the idea for the TED Talk? And also on the same note, when you were creating, like, your videos and stuff, like, how do you even think of these ideas? That's a good question. Um, basically, um... I um uh, collecting my thoughts. It's all good. It's all good. So I had a teacher um from I elementary school. Well, um I went to this school pre-K through 12th grade. Yeah. No, not 12th, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Pre-K through, uh, I left it when I was in 10th grade. Okay. And so, oh no, it's a 9th grade. 9th grade, um, okay, 9th grade. Um, but uh, one of the uh, teachers at that school, uh, Mrs. Huber, mm. um, uh, but taught me uh, since I was in pre-K, since I was five. Um, so she um, uh, she's uh, she studies like uh, neural things. neurologic, yeah, neurologic, yeah. Actually. And so. Um, She um uh her one, yeah. Um I imagine she uh helped you a lot when uh it came to uh of, of your autism, right? Um, right. So my my story is that there was this uh, there was this wealthy couple in the area mm. that had a son who uh, didn't learn very well at the schools they sent him to. Right. So this couple decided to um, make their own school for their son, mm. and so they made this private school with its own unique curriculum and 
for it to specialize in students that um that that were similar to uh their sons to what their son had right and so um this school is called a clearwater academy and was founded in tyrone which is the city that neighbors peachtree city and which is uh because i live in my 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 parents live in tyrone and right right tyrone um that's where i grew up and so um for clearwater uh academy i my mom could tell that um i was different from her other two sons that she had at the time mm. and so she did a lot of research and looked for ways to help me yeah like uh, because i certainly learned different than my brothers did and mm. um one moment yeah, yeah 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 you got this man you got this you're doing great you're doing great oh. <laughs> Thanks. 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 um and so it was interesting is um uh, my mom found out about this school because before I was going to Clearwater Academy in pre-K, right. I was going to um, the the local public school um, mm. uh, and, and, and pre-K. And so, um, and so uh, I vividly remember um, being upset that I was no longer going to uh crab apple lane right and so which is the name of the public elementary school i was presently going to and so i had only attended uh crab apple lane for like two months or so yeah um before um it was like um uh, it's like uh it's like the movie it's like a movie where um where the villain is being like dragged like with his arms by people through a hallway right i yeah um, i think i think i may know what to talk about especially we'll be showing it like on the screen as well <laughs> but um it was uh because that that one i have one vivid memory of being um taken to to the, the new school right, and being right. uh, very upset because it was change and yeah uh, being younger i had a very hard time dealing with change oh, yeah. um and so there um then i was at, at clearwater and so um over the years at clearwater um the teachers who started like the first year of the school's enrollment right um started to leave and uh the students started to leave as well yeah and so um eventually um especially as the years went on pre uh clearwater dropped uh doing pre-k students and focused more on like uh i think it they, they did like fifth grade and Okay, yeah, like uh, up to up to middle school, yeah, at that rate, something like that, yeah. Uh, but um, so that's something unique. But yeah. um, <laughs> but being in um, at uh, at Clearwater for the time I was like, uh, as years went on, things started to change a little bit because yeah. the couple that started the school, um was um well their their son had finished going to that school so okay um at least i think he has um he, he certainly should be done with high school by now right right cause... about now yeah but um anyway um the uh the only original teacher that um the the year i left uh, clearwater academy uh was the year that uh the last original teacher left as well mm -hmm. and so um there was uh but there was like one or two uh, samir was uh, the wealthy couple's son and right, uh right. and sam was an original student 
Um, yeah. I think they're both uh, done with clear water now, but yeah. um, and so like no one's original left. But uh, the thing special about Mrs. Huber, which is the whole thing, I'm um, I'm going back around to tie the subject in. Right, is, right, right. Yeah, of course. Is that Mrs. Huber is the only teacher that um taught me when I was so young who has maintained contact with me throughout the years yeah and and so um I don't know if it was uh if it pertains to me or not but it is interesting that she um I don't think it strictly pertains to me but she's very fond of me um right and right. Um, they did happen to, uh, purchase, cause we don't live in a neighborhood. They did happen to purchase, uh, some land that is kind of neighbors as ours. Okay. Oh, so close to like your are, house and stuff. Yeah. Our houses are not far apart and we separated by like, uh, a hundred yards of woods. So. Okay. Um, yeah. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and so. Mrs. Huber uh, wanted to work with me even after Clearwater and I had moved on to a private high school right. that um, focused on, you know, I guess you can call it the average private high school, but yeah, um, there it was, uh, its focus was towards uh, people who functioned more normally. Um, right, right. But because, um, I was able to, because of the patience that the teachers um, at Clearwater put into me, um, I was able to um, to operate in a normal school setting because of, because of the patience they put in for me to uh, around those learning curves, especially the uh, the social learning curves. But that was a, another big change for Clearwater as well. Yeah. is um because um i use the phrase uh socially advanced right. um many of the students uh who attended clearwater were not socially advanced mm. um so i'd find myself a lot of times especially in the later years of clearwater um talking to the teachers more than i talked with the students right and so i kind of gravitated towards doing that in high school as well yeah um I also, um, with, uh, the morals, the moral values I have, I, um, I didn't identify with a lot of the guys in high school. And so right. I found myself talking to more girls than guys Yeah, <laughs> because, oh, um, <laughs> they seems to have moral standards or, <laughs> right. or, uh, or just, uh, I guess the big thing was just maturity really. Yeah. But. So Mrs. Schuber wanted to work with me um, um I was uh I'm kind of the story of my life I'm really bad at procrastinating um homework and things uh right. it's a uh, it's a uh, um it's a uh, I don't have to do it right now cuz I have plenty of time to do it Right, right. Oh no, I don't have enough time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> now there's yeah. too much work for me to do it. Right. Yeah. Uh it's yeah. this uh it's this flawed loop, but yeah. Um, but um so I was struggling with academics and or uh socializing a little bit and so mom wanted me to um uh she had me go to someone i call my schedule advisor yeah um who is like okay uh your your homework is done good um uh you have uh, these events uh lined up in your calendar or whatever so she had me go to a schedule advisor and uh she also um uh, had me work with mrs huber um yeah. and so um and while I'm sure it uh, helped in my mind, it didn't actually help me as much as 
in my mind, I was telling myself it helped mom think it was helping me. Right. And so, but in order for, but if going, if going to Mrs. Huber and my schedule advisor, um, is what gave mom the peace of mind and from there, uh, results changed, then maybe they helped. And so, um, it wasn't just all useless. I mean, there was like a little bit of help from there, but yeah. it wasn't uh, <laughs> incredibly um, uh, what I would determine is useful. But um, right. Mrs. Huber, um, well, I was working with her on various things. And um, one of the... Uh, she wanted me to do something during the times I visit her. Yeah. And I was brainstorming um what's what's a, what's something I can do um while yeah. I'm having these sessions with you. Right. And um and back to your original question at the start of this. Yeah. Um that's uh that was the idea I came up with um the the how uh how we think uh asperger's um and so um i wanted to um make a make a ted talk uh, fashion kind of uh video it was i mean honestly it was like really good too like it did like definitely explain of like you know what you know what we have like the whole definition how we act the whole nine yards and even uh one part you were saying uh that once you know that you were acting different than everybody else you were saying that your mom caught it and honestly i actually have the similar story that my mom was like the first person that caught it too it was crazy because at the time it was um you know, people really didn't believe my mom. And there was like so much other stuff as like, they wouldn't believe like what we, what both of us could do, you know, in terms of like, you know, speaking to each other. And even from your situation, like you're driving, like that was the thing I felt like for this picture right here that shows us at the graduation party, you know, you came here like on your own, you drove here. And that was the thing that was like super incredible. That was like, wait a minute. And, you know, a little bit last year, like a, another thing uh, that's, that I haven't really show, uh, shared to anybody, I've been picking up driver's lessons, but I'm planning on get to it, you know, a little later, but I, but I am thinking of going back to it. But um, so I guess like one of the things that we could move on to for sure for like one of our last type of our second to last thing before we like head up out of here is. So one of the things I've noticed that you got is like, as far as like film goes. So I was wondering what was like the first film that you remember and what was like an inspirational film that you can remember? Hello? I'm, um, I'm oh, charging. Oh, you're charging? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You heard me, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, That's one of the first films I remember watching or making. Um, we can go with making too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The first. Yeah. The first. It was like the first thing that. Well, let's okay. Let me restart. Let me say it like this: like the first type of film that made you really inspired to like do you know movie making now. You know. Um. You know what's funny is um. I'm a very logistically minded person, so I try to think as far back as I remember, but you know, I have my memories, but I can't really put a it's, year it's on a it. Lot, yeah. <laughs> but the thing that I uh a very early memory I have is not necessarily a movie hmm. I was hmm. watching. But it was a a play that um, my family used to 
used Thank to. Thank you guys uh, too. Yeah. Yes. Um, and our every Christmas, mm. and so it was. Oh. It was the uh the the three wise men Virgin okay. Mary. Uh, yeah. Family. Okay. And now, so, um, hmm. and when I was younger, um, I was uh, uh very adverse to um, cause to being uh, to being someone I was not. <laughs> Right. Like I am myself. I don't understand why I would ever, you know, <laughs> like that was very much my mindset. To, and uh and I and I didn't like it. It was like this is you're not who you people are. Right. But um, you you start to learn like well it's like the, the prominence of like what is acting. Yeah. Right, right. And so um and so I was just uh watching or um observing that and um i think there were aspects of it that did interest me and mm. um while i wouldn't call that moment inspiration necessarily um it is um it is a moment i look back on um yeah. at some point i contemplated um what do i think the best way to influence the world is nowadays yeah yeah like the most efficient way right um and so um i thought to myself well um apart from a, a a car ride that takes you know two hours or more or uh, a plane ride it takes two hours or more or right um or uh or sleeping <laughs> there there isn't a lot that there are not many things that someone will um voluntarily devote two hours or more of their time into right and so i was thinking well um a movie is a very traditional thing that people sit down to watch and can yeah. take about two hours and so <laughs> I, was, I was thinking well uh making movies is probably a very excellent way to uh influence the world so mm. yeah i definitely say that is the that's that's the best way to answer this honestly um so i guess uh oh man no <laughs> i feel a little emotional here but you know this has really been a great interview uh one of my uh two last things uh is uh do you have anything like coming up for uh uh the rest of this year of 2024? Um the rest of this year. Um let's see. Um, I, I know, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's okay. Um, also, so one thing I also realized is that we were both also in, like, the same thing for, like, Full Cell, which is, like, film. And on that note, I was wondering, like, have you graduated yet? No. How, how many months you got to go so far? 
I failed a few more classes. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, sorry. Um, like how 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 much more do you, do you got to do so far? But despite that, despite that. Um. So I am on the twenty nine month program. Right. Um, I have. I have failed uh, four four classes mm. um, or five and some of them are unique to once. There was one that I failed like three times mm. or yeah, I think it was three times. Yeah. Mm. yeah what class was that by the way? Uh, intro to post production. Yeah, I could. I guess I could see that. Wow. I, I'm trying to remember the class myself, but yeah, I could. It see was a. Uh, it was the procrastination loop. Yeah. Um I think I was. Uh, I was dealing with. Uh, I did enter a depression phase from being down here. It was a new experience and yeah. um not uh not seeing one of my immediate family members. Yeah. Um for a month plus was uh a little disheartening. Yeah. Um uh, you know, I got to see extended family uh, every Sunday. There's some extended family that goes down here. That was right, right, right. nice. Um, yeah. So I was, it was, I was never uh, insanely like the, uh, the, the, the depression was kind of, uh, emotional but i don't think it was ever really a a clinically um it certainly affected my sleep schedule but i don't mm -hmm. think it drastically affected my life in any serious way right right um uh, um and so that that the procrastination loop um and they kind of just contributed to me to the me failing of that class a little yeah. bit. Uh, but so it's probably uh instead of twenty nine months, it's gonna be like thirty five or thirty six months. So or, yeah. How long do you got? Like, like, how many classes do you got to go? How many more do you like is left? So well, far? um, so I started August of two years ago. Okay. And so if it's gonna be, it's gonna be under thirty six months. So I think at least uh, I plan to have it be under thirty six months. But okay. um, so if it's under three years. Then it'll approximately be, um, uh, I also to do the math of uh, the weeks full, so let you have off. I'm it, uh, oh, sorry. I think those that pushes that pushes up a little bit. Yeah, your classes. So it might be. I don't think it'll be this year, but okay, it will be. Uh, let's see, I'm in like month seventeen, yeah, or I'm, something. I don't know, fourteen. Like, I'm probably going to predict it may be either the end of this year or at least by the start of 2025 or 2025. That's, yeah that's that's, okay. yeah, that's that's how we could like narrow it down so um one of the last things i'm gonna ask you before we kind of head out is um how do we 
find you if we want to like either do interviews or even you know um where to watch your stuff you know um find me yeah like if uh if anybody likes to do like interviews with you or even you know catch your uh your videos you know uh where do we contact you if 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 you would like to provide that information my um i made a uh when i made my youtube channel i um also made it with um my like uh i made a youtube channel address so yeah. um 4mdt21 at gmail.com okay that's how we could find you yeah that's my youtube gmail address okay oh okay and it's like okay i got you all right well you know uh matt 4md thank you so much for your time and i guess we'll be see each other around goodbye well, thank you for devoting your time. I know you probably didn't expect a big spiel from me. Uh, no, it's okay. Or, I don't know. It was. It's. It's. <laughs> it's going to be a special episode, so I got that covered. See ya. Well, uh, thanks for uh, interviewing me, Eddie. You're very welcome, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview and for our shout outs for this interview we have got Foxy Maxe and Okoto Moto Kitchen and also on that note for this special episode is that I have put the link of not just my book again but also the website of autismawareness.com coming up next is the upcoming cosplayer from Jay Hitori's friends once again named Glide. And you know, as usual, guys, I'm going to see you next time. <laughs>